Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Rebecca. I am the Nomad and this is my life. And today in my life, I am doing another Create This Book video. Create This Book was written by Mariah Elizabeth and you can purchase it on Amazon. I will post a link in the description that will link you to both her YouTube channel and the link on Amazon so that you can purchase the book for yourself. Today is my second video. As I said in the first video, I won't be doing the prompts in order, but I will be posting them in the order in which I complete them. So, for today, we will be doing Create an Alien. This prompt instructs us to draw what we imagine an alien would look like. I didn't have a plan when I began this drawing. I just started doodling to see where it would take me. I started with his long trunk on the bottom, which initially had some weird little stubby legs, so he looked almost like a cross between a centipede and a centaur, like a centarpede. <laughs> but once I got his arms and torso drawn, I saw a snail in my mind's eye, so I erased those little legs and added a shell. My daughter took one look at the drawing and said that I made a snailian. <laughs> I thought my snailian looked a little bit lonely on that plain blank background, so I went through and put him in a little alien landscape. And here we have our completed character. He looks very polite to me. I think I'll call him Niles. I don't know why. I decided to use all acrylic paints on this design because I want to practice with different media and I figured it would be a good opportunity to do that. I've made squishies in recent years, so although I have painted more recently, I haven't painted an actual picture in years. And before, even when I was painting, I never sketched anything out ahead of time. I would just start painting and see what came out. The instant the idea for the snailian popped into my head, I immediately saw this spirally galaxy themed shell on his back. Of course, I had no idea if I would be able to pull the design off or not and make it look decent, but you know what? Oh, I went for it anyway. You can be the final judge on whether or not I was successful. I found this pack of shiny color shift paints at Walmart and I just thought that they would be perfect for this page. Plus, they make the shell shiny, which I think is perfect because I think all the prettiest shells are shiny. I kind of wish that I had stopped right here, but oh no, 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 
I had to carry on. Gold is wonderful and gorgeous, right? Gold makes everything better, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Just speed it up and get it over with. And thus begins my arduous task of attempting to blend these colors out and to just make them look nice. I think I kind of succeeded until I decided to go around with this black outlining and ruin it again. So I kept fiddling with it for a minute, trying to make it better, but I finally just needed to distance myself from the frustration and move on. So I decided to give Niles this bright orange vest because I thought it would be a nice contrasting color and it would really stand out and give him some pop. However, I must admit now that I've been sort of laughing because with this bright orange vest, he looks sort of like an intergalactic highway worker. <laughs> This was the part of the shell I was the most excited to work on and the most excited to see, adding the little stars to the galaxy. However, I do wish that I had kept them more centrally located to the middle of each spiral. I think it would have looked better. C'est la vie. I do absolutely love the addition of these little twinkle stars, however, I think that they are precious and give it the perfect pop. I decided to make the sandy desert floor a pretty purple. I thought it would look nice and it was a good alternative to the blue I had originally wanted to go with. The blue did look really pretty, but the problem was that as soon as I started putting it down, it looked more like an ocean than a pretty sandy desert floor. So, leaving the floor to dry, I have moved on to the sky. I have decided to paint it a bright pink in a gradient going from dark at the top to light down at the bottom. Why a pink sky, you may be wondering? Well, because it struck me as an extremely alien landscape. After I finished that, I went in with my yellow Posca pen and added some little yellow speckling to him just in a few spots, just to add some detail and a little character. I'm so sorry he's not in frame. I don't know why. Also, for those of you who did notice, the reason that the purple sand on the bottom is suddenly changed is because I decided it was too dark and I didn't like it, so I went over it with a paler shade. After that, I moved on to coloring in some of these little planets and moons that I had drawn on, just trying to add a little bit of character, nothing too crazy. I did decide to use the color shift paints on these little planetoids as well, just to give them a little extra shine. Then I went back to my little crystal cluster down here in the sand and spent a while touching this up and blending and just trying to make it look nicer. I really don't think that turned out too shabby in the end for a beginner. And I do like the shiny shell. I was actually really excited to start these little moons. Oh, the ignorance of youth. See, that's not too bad. See, that's looking pretty good. I like that. I better not do anything to ruin it. Like that. Oh, what? Why? Why? I, I don't know why I'm doing this. Good Lord. Looking at you makes me mad. Better just move on. Oh, good lord. Let's just get this over with. Yeah, sure. Revisit that, since you didn't screw it up badly enough already. Now that I've destroyed my moons, it's time to move on to the sandy floor. I tried to add some dimension to this, but I just wound up making a big old mess and abandoned it. Now I'm just going back over all of my line work and freshening all of that up and making sure that it looks nice and crisp. And of course I was careful to leave the prompt clear and visible again because I like to be able to see those.
I wasn't happy with the sandy desert floor at first, but I really think adding these lines made all the difference in the world. Now I'm just going through with my white Posca pen and adding some shine spots to those little crystals. And then I decided to use that to try to give it sort of a slimy look on the bottom of the snail. Part of the reason I decided to do a pink sky was because I thought it would be beautiful to do these little black stars in the background, and I thought that they would make a neat and interesting contrast to the regular white stars on the galaxy shell. This is what the completed picture looked like before Mod Podge. I wanted to show you because it changes a bit after I add the Mod Podge. Also, in case you didn't notice, I added glitter to the sand, the crystals, and the prompt. I thought that it would look pretty, but I actually kind of wound up not liking it. So, again, c'est la vie. Adding a nice thick coat of matte Mod Podge is a very good way to help protect and preserve your artwork. However, this time it kind of bit me in the butt because for some reason it decided to make my stars streaky. I enjoyed doing this prompt so much, weird streaky stars and all. Yes, I have a love-hate relationship with the shell, but oh well, I'll live. Overall, I love my Snailian. I think Niles is adorable and came out great. I hope you enjoyed watching my video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're interested, you can check out my narration channel, Nomad's Land Studios. I would love to see you there. Stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.